Recently I've been playing with this little Zsum Wi-Fi card reader and put OpenWRT on it. The principal device on this board is the big chip in the middle, obviously, which is an Atheros 8R9331. These devices are also known as a system on a chip or an SOC because they have obviously all the systems that are needed directly on the chip, uh, including Ethernet. In the case of this device, the Ethernet pins are broken out. Uh, you may just be able to work them out uh, down there. If you happen to maybe brick a device or you want to have access to it via Ethernet, you have to connect obviously an Ethernet jack to this um, or to these connections. It is possible to connect an Ethernet jack directly to them, but if you read any of the descriptions, it says to use an Ethernet jack with magnetics. What does that mean? Well, the Ethernet standard says that the Ethernet ports should not be directly connected to devices. They should go through isolating transformers, which obviously uh, work on magnetic principles. So here we can see the internals of uh, a, a typical router with the Ethernet jacks on the back there. And directly behind them are these devices, which are the magnetics. So inside here are little coils, little transformers, which isolate the Ethernet port from the devices on the, on the board. It's another Atheros device there. Now the idea behind that is uh, principally isolation. If uh, you're running Ethernet cables for any distance, for sure the um, things that are plugged into them are powered from different phases on, on a system, perhaps different parts of the building, and their sort of DC offset um, could be uh, very different and that could damage uh, damage equipment. The, the chips inside the equipment are isolated by these little transformers. If we had to wire these in, that would be extremely unwieldy. So what we need is the mythical ethernet with magnetics. It, this is off of a, a typical PC motherboard. I looked on the motherboard and did not find any of the these types of transformers. Taking the unit apart, it can clearly be seen on, on the back that the little toroids, the little transformers, are embedded uh, on, the, on the back of the device. The next challenge would be to find out how to actually connect it. Obviously there's a whole bunch of uh, different connections there. So I simply googled, um, this is a Foxconn device, uh, where is it? Yes, you can see on the on the top of the shield there, it says Foxconn. So we know it's a Foxconn, and if we Google for this reference number here, we can find the data sheet. Here's a copy of the data sheet, and we can clearly see the, the, the internals, the transformers. So on this side is the actual Ethernet uh, jack, and having passed through the transformers on this side, these are the pins that we need to connect to uh, our system on a chip. There is a fly in the ointment, as, as always. These little transformers have a, have a center tap, which must be DC biased. Um, normally, the voltage will come from the device itself, uh, but in a pinch, which is where we are, you can actually power it directly from the same power supply that's powering the, uh, the system on a chip. So if we find out which are the center taps, and simply, in this case, connect those to 3.3 volts, then uh, all should be good. So we know what to do with the center taps, and the others, other connections are marked as uh, transmit data positive, transmit data negative, receive, and receive negative. Now we've identified what the pin's function is. I've soldered some wires on the back, so Let's see if we can solder them to the chip and get it working. In the photo you can see the uh, arrangement hooked up now. The black clip in the middle is feeding 3.3 volts from my little Arduino power supply 
and that's supplying both the center taps of the uh, of the magnetics and the 3.3 volts to the system on a chip. When we go to the PC, we can see the Wi-Fi on the laptop is disabled and we are connected via Ethernet to OpenWRT. So if we look with our browser, here's the status of, uh, of the device itself. And if we scroll down in the status, we can see the, the network here. It's got its uh, IP address from my access point. The device is connected in bridge mode. As we can see, if we look in the network interfaces, here we can see the local area network interface and below it we can see the WAN interface which is the bridge to my access point. So I hope you found that useful, uh, another excellent result.